All praise to the Most High Yah. This is Lori, Sister Lori Yah, coming back to you from the Kingdom Come Daughters of Ministry, uh, Daughters of Zion Ministry. I'm happy to say that I'm back and in uh, restored health. I've been away for quite some time. Um, I really missed you, family, and but I did want to let you know that uh, I, my goal is to upload um, videos uh, at least every Sabbath. Today is December the 19th, 2020, and um, we are definitely living in perilous times. And I thought that it was, I felt in my spirit, rather, that it was the right time to come back to you. Um, and I wanted to say first that we have a credo here, uh, and it's, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Um, so I was praying this morning. Uh, asking the Lord to just reveal to me when and if he wants me to speak again. Um, and it's funny because the Most High did reveal to my spirit that he just wanted me to talk about repentance and uh, what that's all about uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic shutdown, um, not to just put focus on the pandemic, but because it is a time that we are living in that is perilous. And I just have a few scriptures that I want to bring to you this, this morning that um, he put in my spirit to share with you. Um, you know, on this Sabbath day, I do have a, fr uh, a few scriptures, uh, just three. Uh, first, I'm going to be reading out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 1. Verse 1 and 2, if you can uh, turn to your Bibles, and that's about the rebellious children. The next scripture is Isaiah 59, 15 through 21, and that's about the Most High repaying our enemies, uh, re recompensing back on their heads what they've done to us. And the last scripture, well, there's a, four scriptures, actually. Ezekiel is the next one, 36, verse 22 through 29. It talks about uncleanliness. And then on a side note, uh, I have a scripture, Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. Um, and I just wanted to kind of go through these scriptures just to help those that, even if you're brand new, to my channel, um, Kingdom Come, the Daughters of Zion channel. It doesn't matter whether you're a Jew, whether you're a Gentile, or whether you are don't you don't have any proclamation to any religion or any kind of sect or camp, or uh, you could be Buddhist, you could be uh, Muslim. It does not matter. This message is for you because we hear what we do is we preach truth and in our bible we believe because we read from the king james bible that if you know the truth the truth will set you free and my prayer is that it will just reside in your spirit and manifest one day hopefully maybe some will get it maybe some won't i don't know but it's not my job it's just my job to spread the gospel, the good news of the kingdom to come. And so with that says, the kingdom to come has conditions. And that's why I believe the Most High gave me the spirit of repentance this morning to be the common thread throughout every video that I do. It's all about repentance. So let's just get to it. So in our first uh uh, the first scripture, it, we're going to be coming from uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And I'm going to read to you as best I can. I have to take my glasses off because I just can only see with one eye, but God has gave me two eyes. So, all right. So follow along with me, saints. And this is the vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah. And Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. And uh, it's about the wickedness of Judah. 
our forefathers, those of us that are con consider ourselves to be Hebrews in our spirit, this is concerning your history. And it says, hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought you up, children, and they that rebel against me. Okay, so uh, he's talking to the rebellious children in the beginning of this chapter of Isaiah, of the book of Isaiah. And he's not happy, okay, uh, because he says, I have nourished and brought up children that they have rebelled against me. So I'm going to stop right there because I just wanted to make a point. When you rebel against someone, anyone, that means you're against, um, not for that person, thing, entity, whatever it is. It means you have turned your back. So he's mad. He's mad. And, you know, with when you make a decision, then consequences follow. So uh, the next thing is, is, so he's talking about, he's talking to his rebellious children. And I'll, I'll take it a little further why uh, we fail. Because we went on to serving false gods that were made of stone and wood that couldn't see, eat, smell, or do anything. And we kept turning away from the God of our fathers, the Most High Yah in heaven that created the earth and the universe and the heavens above and everything below. We turned away from that God that created us, man, and hewed us from the earth. That's who we turned away from. That's why he is so mad at us, okay? So don't get this confused and twisted with me talking about other gods. No, hear, O Israel, our, the Lord our God is one God. So I'm only talking about the most high Yah that created the heavens, the earth, and man, us, okay? Just so for those of you that are new coming into the truth, I just wanted to make it clear, not to suggest that anyone is stupid or slow or anything like that. But sometimes I don't want people to take the words that I'm saying and twist it. I, so I try to be explicitly clear of whom I'm addressing. So we're talking about, we're addressing the children of Israel, which are those of you who are Israel by birthright and spiritual Israel. Those of you who have adapted the ways, the commandments, the statutes, and who are following um, the laws, the Sabbath days, and keeping all of the high holy days that are doing the will of the Father. That's who I'm talking to. Those were the children that your forefathers were disobedient back in the day, okay? And this was in antiquity, and they rebelled against the Most High. So he was mad. So, which brings us to the next part of it. Now, remember the common thread here, we're talking about repentance. Okay. Because, you know, with every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that is true in physics, but it's also true here in the Bible. When we do something wrong, we have to pay. Okay. When we do right, there's a good consequence or outcome for that as well. So the law of physics does make sense to this um, what I'm talking about here. But I do want to take you to the book of Ezekiel because what it's talking about here is the Most High will repay our enemies. Now, I don't know who or what you consider an enemy, but I consider an enemy someone that is an enemy of the Most High, number one, because that is my God that I trust and love and keep his commandments. And also the enemies that try to hurt me, my family, in whatever insidious way they try to do that. Or even if they're just straight up evil people that want to come against me and cause me harm, hurt, or danger. Okay? That is an enemy. Um, now, it could be an enemy for, for a time because enemies do repent also. But what I'm bringing 
uh, forth here is an enemy that the Most High is is um, is talking about, and this is in the fifty ninth chapter of of Isaiah, verse fifteen through twenty one, and it says, "One kingdom, one king." It says again, "The word of the Lord came to me," and this is Isaiah. I mean Ezekiel. Excuse me. This is Ezekiel. Excuse me. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself here. All right, I'm sorry. Let's back it up. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 59 and 15 through 21. Salakia. All right, so Isaiah chapter 15. And we're going to read all the way through chapter 21. Okay. Okay. So it says, now this is the Redeemer of Zion. The Redeemer of Zion is the Holy One, the Most High, Yah. It says, then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him, and there was no justice. And then he saw there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him. And his own righteousness sustained him, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate, a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on his garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak according to their deeds. Accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense his own enemies. Okay? And it says the coastlands he will fully repay. So shall they fear, okay, the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy comes in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Now, some could say that, you know, this is talking about uh, the end times. But if you read or have read the Bible and know something about the history of the Hebrews, the Lord has always stood up for his people and fought for his people as long as they were obedient. And it goes on to chapter 20 to say the Redeemer of Zion will come, to, the Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Let me read chapter 20 again. It says the Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Amen. Who is Jacob? Jacob was the son of Isaac. Okay. He was the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. So he's talking here about the transgressions of Israel. Sometimes the word can be a little tricky. We understand Jacob to be a person, but Jacob is here referenced as his children. He's talking about a nation. Okay, Jacob's children the 12 tribes of Israel that transgressed. And so that's why I specifically uh, like that verse because it does, you know, mention the entire assembly of God's people, of the apple of his eye, okay? And now, uh, not to make this too long, but then I want to go to Ezekiel 36, 22 through 29. Okay. All right. Now, and this is uh, just to give you a little preface is about the uncleanliness that uh, Jacob, Israel, has done in the sight of Yah. Why he's so angry. Okay. So let's start at chapter 20 through 22 and read through verse 29. 
And it says, therefore, I say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations. Whenever you went, wherever you went. So see, we sinned everywhere we went. We became what's called Hellenist Jews, which means we went the way of the heathen, of the Greeks, okay, of the Romans. We took on their ways and their truths and their beliefs and their holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. We started doing Sunday church and uh, everything else that you can imagine, eating pork and doing, um, you know, God knows what, it, uh, it, just taking on their ways. And that's why it's mentioned to come out of her, my people in Revelation, because we have taken on the ways of, of those that are adversaries of the Most High. So let's go on. So it says, I'm going to read that again. It says, therefore, say to the house of Israel, uh, thus says the Lord, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profane, profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hollowed in you before their eyes. Okay, so I will, and that's going to happen um, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, or it could be, and in the, in Revelation as well, there's, there's two places where this will happen. It says, for I will take you from all from among all the nations where I gathered you and from all the countries and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean and I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your idols. And will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave your forefathers and you shall be my people, and I will be your God, and I will deliver you from all of your uncleanliness. And I'm going to stop there because this is really talking about the end times when the new Jerusalem, I'm sorry, I was thinking about the Valley of Jehoshaphat because that's where he wakes up the dry bones and he calls Israel up out of their graves, see, and puts her sinews back together and they become alive again. But that metaphorically is talking about us waking up also. So that's putting a new spirit in us too, his spirit in us at that juncture as well uh, in history. But this is definitely talking about uh, in the end, he's gonna put a new heart of flesh in us and the statutes and commandments, we will follow. We won't have a choice. That's what this is saying. And so I love this scripture because it's it's right before, if you want to read the Valley of Dry Bones, it's that's um, Ezekiel 37, the, ne the very next chapter. And it talks about how he's going to wake us up. And um, even, you know, those that have passed on your loved ones before you, uh, they will definitely um, come up out of their graves. Because even though, you know, I used to think about, well, what happened to my forefathers that didn't know this truth that have passed on and died and i really had to reckon with that but what the most High showed me in uh this book and the apocrypha and other books that i read that makes sense is that they're just sleeping and he's going to give 
Israel an opportunity to understand his statutes and laws because he says in the end every day will be Sabbath you know and I will cause you to to ride high on the winds and oh my god it's just beautiful the way he describes when he wakes us up and how we're going to be in the in in that time I don't want to get into that because that's a whole different um theme I just wanted to let you know though that in that last chapter uncleanliness it talked about idols okay it talked about you know go going the way of of these other nations so when we turn from the most high and do what the other nations are doing we become an enemy of his okay he looks at us as turning our backs on him to be to make it kind of simple and uh, very straightforward. Um, so that would give us an opportunity for repentance right there as well. And this is really what the common thread is about. It's about repenting from all of our sins. Now, I'm going to just read a side note from uh, the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. All right. So when we, um, now this is Paul, the apostle of Yahweh Shai, um, by the will of the Most High, and Timothy, uh, the, he calls him their brother. Um, let me read here. Okay, make sure I have the. Okay, so we're talking about chapter two. Um, okay, chapter two, verse eight and nine. Now, uh, it says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ, okay? For in him dwells all fullness of the Godhead, boldly, bodily, I'm sorry. And you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So what that's saying, it's talking about, we don't go by according to the traditions of, of men and do as men do and follow their idols and their uh, philosophies. And whenever they add to this word and make up stuff and add to it, that's not in this word, there's a problem. Okay. It, it, we're taking on the traditions of men when we do that. So we have to be careful who we follow and how we follow this word. That's why it says, get thine understanding and get and get wisdom and understanding in the book of Psalms, Proverbs rather, and get thine own understanding. Let the spirit of the most high guide you. Okay. Uh, and, and, and so that you can know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay. All right. And so my final point here uh, really is that it's, it's a rhetorical question we all have to ask ourselves all the time because we sin, we fall short of the glory of the Most High. Yes, we do. But we don't want to continue doing things that are going to always cause us to have to repent. So I would ask you, you know, do you have your house in order? Meaning, you know, are you really um, sincere about, you know, becoming into full repentance with the Most High? sincerely praying to him, asking him for forgiveness for everything in life that went against what he, um, what he had set for us. Because in the commandments, there's 360 some hundred uh, commandments. And that is a lot to carry, but we do our best. But the thing that I do know that I can share with you to give you some comfort is that God knows our hearts. And if we are sincere and fall on our knees and pray to him and turn to the east while we're praying, 
three times a day in the morning like David, six and 12 in the afternoon and then six in the evening. And he, he will hear our prayers, but he will not answer us if we're not in full obedience to him. He says, even your prayers are detestable to me. If, if you're not living right, in other words, that is what the word says, not my words. That's what the word says. He will not hear your prayers. So sometimes our prayers aren't going to be answered because if we're not living in, I have to say, as, in, as righteous as we can, because Yahawashai, whom we call him, the world ignorantly calls him Jesus Christ. Yahawashai is a full fullness of righteousness. He is the only righteous one because he is holy. We can never come close to that. But thank God for him. Thank God for, for, for Yah, his father that gave us the son so that we can go to him to intercede for us. Okay. And, and, and just, you know, take our prayers to him and ask in his name to be forgiven. Okay. Here on earth and in heaven then we will be forgiven provided that we are so sincere, you know, and we come to him as humble as we know how. And so that is the message today. And it will be the common thread throughout. So the next Sabbath, we'll talk about other uh, parts of the Bible that talk about repentance and why it's so important. And um, I think the most high for giving me that spirit of, um, of a message to bring to you today. I just hope it's been edifying to the saints. Um, I pray that you um, get a lot of uh, information from this video and just study the scriptures on your own, but stay, keep your head in the book, but please repent because these are perilous times during the COVID-19 pandemic. And just pray that the Lord, uh, the death angel, pass over your borders and your home. And I pray that everyone is safe and protected and until next Sabbath, I, I would say Shabbat Shalom from the Kingdom Come, Daughters of Zion Ministry. This is Sister Lori Yah signing off. Amen.